Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. We've got a whole big topic of stuff to talk about today, but I was able to secure one of the limited edition Les Paul Standard slash Album 4 commemorative guitars. It's a really long title. It's hard to say it right. But let's go ahead and start in on our topics. So this is a very historic guitar because, as far as I'm aware, it's the first album that Gibson's new division has produced. Because July 2021, if you didn't know it, Gibson actually is in the record business now. And they've signed up Slash to do their new album here. Number four for Slash features Miles Kennedy and the Conspirators. So what that means for me is almost every album release, if it's with a big name artist, might now come also with a signature guitar. So that has me excited. But this one, let's just go ahead and crack it open before we comment on everything that's unique about this limited run. Inside here. Where's my number four on the guitar? Yeah, that's the biggest thing a lot of people didn't like about this run is there was a big four on it in all the stock photos. They don't come with that. That's that's in the case. So I had a lot of people upset that they passed on these things because they didn't like the number four on it. Yeah, that's just a decal. I think I'll go ahead and maybe put it on. I'm not sure. But this is a nice looking top. Now, as far as guitars go, I'm not going to lie to you guys. There is nothing different between this one and a regular Les Paul slash signature that you can buy for three thousand dollars. So how much were these guys? They were three thousand two hundred ninety nine. But Gibson, why, why weren't these $4,000? People would have paid it. It's the slash number four, Les Paul. It could be 4,000. I think that would have been nice symmetry because they only made 250 of these. And that's the big kicker. Why is this guitar worth so much? It's because it's a super limited edition and because of the whole slash four album commemorative. So if that becomes a big album in the future, people will want these things. And before you get upset with me for asking Gibson to raise prices, Take a look at the resale market. I figured these would be about five to six thousand dollar guitars right away. However, I've been surprised. People have been listening to them at ten thousand. I've seen one at twenty thousand. However, there are actually completed documented sales at seventy three hundred, seventy five hundred, sixty two ninety five, and even one at almost twelve thousand. Now that's just the final asking price. Is not necessarily what they got, but yeah. Fantastic instant investment. So why is Slash number four, the exact same guitar as all the other Slash series guitars over here, worth all the way this much? It's because of that limited edition nature and everything else that comes in here. So first off, we've got this giant big rectangle case. Gibson doesn't use these for Les Pauls very often, like in the early 70s occasionally they did. But it says Gibson right there. We've got number four. It looks like it was just kind of sprayed onto the case there with like some adhesive or something. You can kind of see an outline there. So it's probably just a decal. But why did they have to give it a rectangle case? It's because of all of the case candy we're about to see here. You get the actual album on here in vinyl, which I think is just fantastic because otherwise I would have never have had one of these things. I don't even think I've ever personally ever owned a record. So here we can see all their new songs on here from the river is rising all the way back to fall back to earth. Now I actually already listened to this online and I've got to say river is rising has the best little hook riff in there. So I might pay some tribute to that today. Next up, we have the album name on this little black folder and inside sleeps. Hey, our decal that we've been looking for that we need to put on the guitar right there with some instructions on how to center it up. All right. And then look at that. I've been seeing a lot of nice comments about this online that they like the fact that it's not just the slash signature guitar, it's the whole album. So you get signatures by all the band members. For a minute, I was like, hey, where's Slash's signature? It's down here. <laughs> Next up here, just your regular pre-packed checklist, all that good stuff, baby photo in here. But oh, that's interesting. That's the first time I've ever seen them spell it out 2022. I think it would have been nice to get like a special strap instead of the regular strap. Like seriously, they could have easily put another $700 on here and gave us like a cool concho strap or whatever it's called. And inside our little baggie here, we do have some extra treats from the Gibson multi-tool like you normally get. You get a cream pick guard. I would not suggest installing that though. A blank truss rod cover if you don't want Slash's signature on it, just like his regular models. A nice little polishing cloth, the Gibson owner's manual. And here we have a sealed Slash tin with the album name on it. Looks like your regular Slash logo ones that are Tortex and in a variety of colors from black, purple, red to blue. But I'm curious what the record looks like if they did anything special for that. So let's go ahead and open this and take a look. 
So we've got that metallic outer cover, and then you got just a regular black one in here. Then inside that, you get more protective covering that says the Slash 4 in Miles Kennedy. And then finally, we get to our beautiful vinyl. That looks like so, having the same branding on it as everything else. A side and B side. But what's really cool is you can actually see the Gibson records right there. I mean, it just seems like such a natural integration for Gibson to get into the record business when they have Slash everything else, they might as well do his music too. <laughs> Oh, and it looks like I missed one other fancy thing right here. Maybe another one. The credits of the album here. Oh, and sweet, you actually get the lyrics to the songs? Is that what they normally do on vinyls or is that special? I've never had one before. You know, it sounds like we might have one more special thing in here. Happened to drop it there, but it's another slash pick in there. They just hide these things all over the place. And last but not least, you get your Schaller counterparts for your Schaller strap locks. However, it looks like I'm missing my switch tip within all this. So what a fantastic spread of stuff here for only a $300 premium, limited edition finish. I mean, this was a no brainer for me. I'm glad I got this because this looks really impressive in person, all this stuff. So congratulations Slash and Miles Kennedy and your band on your new album here. And hopefully to many more because yeah, this is a great looking guitar. However, if you've missed out on this limited edition run and you don't care about the collectability factor of it, you just like this nice translucent cherry finish, here's my theory. This was a prototype run of this finish to gauge interest. So remember how the Anaconda Burst and the Vermilion Bursts are labeled as limited editions? I'm guessing we're going to see those things get retired soon and they're going to bring out a Vermilion or Rosso Corsa model because those are very similar to these. So at the time of recording this, I don't know any of that for sure, but you might be watching this in the future and being like, yeah, of course. Or what's the difference between this and that model? Well, these things came out first, if indeed that does happen. So everything else is looking about the same, but hey, let's go ahead and prove it. Let's throw this thing on the workbench, take an individual look at its parts and specs, and then we'll get to that playing demo. Yep, that decal had to go on there. I know there's a lot of people that are like, why on earth would you do that? But for me, this guitar looks like that. That's how we first saw it, so that's how it should look. We already have red slash signatures. So the installation of that was pretty easy. You just line it up with the center seam about half inch below the stop bar tailpiece and you'll get a very similar look to how it looked in the promotional photos. So first we'll look at our pickups. Interestingly enough, when these first came out, they called these slash buckers. However, at some point in time, they decided to change the name to custom buckers Alnico 2. So I'm not sure why they had to change the name, but that's what these standard ones come with nowadays too. Inside our neck pickup, we can see it's marked TR. R stands for cherry within Gibson's book because they don't want to put C because it might remind them of a different finish. So translucent cherry, and then in our bridge position, LPS, Les Paul Standard, S00. So normally we used to see that all in one line. So now they're doing it that way. But the routes are actually extra clean on this thing. Mahogany body, that's solid, with a two-piece maple top that you can see right here, as well as in your cavities. So let's find out what these bad boys read. Bridge position, 8.57k ohms. Our neck position, 7.69. Then in between, we're at 4.05. And the pickups on the outside, they're double black bobbins, just like the regular slash signatures, but different from the Rosa Corsa model, or the Vermilion that looks very similar. You know what I really think this is? It looks like it's just the vermilion burst without the black border. <laughs> so they might not have actually had to do anything but less finish work to produce these things. But anyways, we have an ABR1 bridge that looks like this. However, it is not mounted in the custom shop traditional style. It has a stud in the body just like a Nashville style bridge. However, cosmetically, this makes it look more like a historic model. But something historic models don't have, Allen key adjustment. You don't have to use your thumb wheels to adjust it. You can actually just put a hex key in there and then move it. As far as our tailpiece, it is lightweight aluminum, advanced plating incorporated branding. I never did find the toggle switch tip on this one, so I'll have to see if Gibson can send me one through the dealer that I purchased this, but the top on this one is actually quite excellent. Like look at the stock photo one, very flamed, very uniform, not too pinstripey, but not too wide. And this is like almost a one for one replica, making me think, is it the exact same guitar? Because not all of these have the same tops. Here, we'll show you some that have shown up on Reverb. So yeah, that's going to vary example to example. 
How can we be sure it's not the promotional material one? It's because we've got some mineral streaks right there. That's a nice little characteristic. Now the decal. Now that I've installed it, I was curious if you could actually remove it, but I think you'll damage the decal if you try, because that's really stuck on there. Just to clarify, you could remove this, yeah, it'd be just fine. However, I don't think the decal would make it and stick again. So it's not something you can stick, unstick, restick, and change your mind a bunch of times. You either want it on there or you don't. However, now that I have it on there, it doesn't look so good when you're looking at it at an angle like this. You can definitely see that white material right there just surrounding it. It looks a little bit cheesy. However, from far away on a display stand, it looks exactly like the stock photos. So that's just one of those, you know, in person, that's what it's going to look like if you put it on there. But in my opinion, you need to put it on it for this one because it's part of the vibe. But anyways, we've got the golden bonnet knobs with position pointers on them, rounded off, and no pick guard installed from the factory, but we did see that one that you can put on if you want. So moving on from our maple top and mahogany body, we got a mahogany neck with a rosewood fretboard. All your standard stuff here, 24 and 3 quarter inch radius, 22 frets that are medium jumbo in style, 12 inch radius with the acrylic trapezoid inlay. We've reviewed this guitar two other times. This is just a different finish. I've got to say though, Gibson has either worked on their tooling marks a little bit, or I got lucky, but this one does not have too much tooling marks. There's some, like right here, you can see like some sort of a fret file or something got it. But for the most part, that's actually pretty darn good for one of these USA standards. But the nut measure is 1.69 inches and 2.08 by the 12th. First fret neck depth rocks 0.91 and 0.1 by the 12th, so a nice C-shaped neck profile. On the contour gauge, here's what that neck profile looks like at your first fret and your 12th fret. And I had somebody ask me a question, what is this showing me? Okay, so what I do for this is I take it to the neck and it shows you the carve of the neck right there. So this is what you're going to feel with your hand. It shows you the shape of the neck and also how deep it is. Sometimes looking at that might help some people a little bit better. Or maybe I should show it to you guys like this. Moving on to the headstock, Les Paul model silkscreen, Mother of Pearl Gibson logo, all blacked out. Here's what the truss rod looks like on this one and the stock cover, but again, you've got that plain one in the case. So far, the only thing QC wise I can really complain about on this one is my bottom strap button was a little bit loose right out of the box. It never completely screws down into place, so that needs to be filled and redrilled or, or use the toothpick trick or something. It's kind of a shame, brand new Gibson that has strap locks on it isn't 100% ready to gig right away, but you can use it as is for now. It's just, you know, you might want to consider that. Moving on to the backside, the wood grain on this example is just fantastic. It kind of reminds me of some custom shop guitars, how they have that really dark red stain and a bunch of wood grain underneath it. This isn't quite as dark as custom shop ones. I mean, check out my 60th anniversary. Those aniline dyes, they go heavy on those things. Here's what our wiring looks like. Standard Gibson pots wired up with orange drop capacitors. Pretty nice stuff. Output jack located on the side. You've got your cream plate. Once again, your Schaller strap locks. Toggle switch in there. These do feature the thin binding in the cutaway. So if you wonder why it looks a little bit wavy right there and you can see a color difference, that is the maple cap being exposed. That is a 50s feature that a lot of people mistake as, oh, poor Gibson quality control. I still need to make that video. Top five Gibson defects that aren't actually defects. <laughs> but moving up the mahogany neck, very similar stuff. Great wood grain. And we get our slash rock and roll logo there with his scully on the back. Gibson deluxe tuners, double line, single ring with our made in USA stamp and our serial number, dating this one to very late 2021 when it was stamped. Oh, and I had some people curious, what number is mine out of 250? Is it, is this one number 183? No, there's no actual numbering system on here. There's no way to know that they only made 250 either. That is just your standard production number date. So this one, 2021, 345th day of the year. Zero means it's the initial batch. If you have a one there, that means it's the second batch of the day. And this was the 183rd next stamped that day. So no, if you're trying to figure out what number yours is, you cannot do that. So overall, a pretty good showing from Gibson as far as QC goes, minus the strap button, but this is chunky. 10 pounds, 5.3 ounces. And let me tell you, that's all in the body. I can feel it. So let's go ahead, plug it in and hear how this one sounds.
pretty happy with the way these things sound. They're extra aggressive, not having any pickup covers on them. We'll start with those distorted tones and then we'll move on to clean here in a minute, but <laughs> this thing just wants me to play slash style riffs. So, uh, bridge pickup, nice and bitey. <laughs> find if you roll the tone down a bit, it gets a little bit less aggressive. Let's go ahead and do some clean tones. are really aggressive clean like they really just overdrive your amp so i think if i was going to mainly play this thing clean i'd probably lower the pickups a bit from the way they came from the factory <laughs> really softly or with your fingers it's very nice like compare this using a pick versus fingers Now that we've played the Slash 4 Les Paul, what are my final thoughts on this thing? Is it worth paying the crazy prices that people are paying on the resale market? Uh, no, I mean, it, it's a collectible, so you know, you got your future value to think about. But it's just like any other Slash Les Paul standard. However, there is kind of a nice, cool, rare, limited edition factor about this one that makes it a little bit more extra special. Like, there's a bit more meaning behind this one. Like, the Appetite Les Paul makes you think of the Appetite for Destruction album. Whereas this one, if you happen to really like the 4 album, of course you're gonna want this thing. There are some nice songs and memorable riffs out of that new album. This particular example is very beautiful with an awesome flame top, and I like it with the four, you might not. But here you can kind of see how that decal looks a little bit better when you're not right up on top of it. 
The pickups, incredibly aggressive out of this thing, almost a little bit too aggressive at times when you're on the clean tones, but I enjoyed playing this one. It's got a nice big 50s style neck. It's all the Slash stuff if you like Slash. So troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed checking this guitar out with me today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.